here we go. All right, here we are. It's it's shortly, it's a little bit after five and it's uh, time for Watch Me Work. Um, I'm Susan Lloyd Parks. We've been doing Watch Me Work for years and years, um, since like 2009 or 2010. In the lobby of the public theater, we started. And then when lockdown came, we went on Zoom and we're still on Zoom. We've been hosted all this time by the public theater and by HowlRound. We are so grateful to both of those entities. And we are now housed and embraced and swaddled by the new work development. Mm -hmm. uh, swaddled, that's a good word. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're here. So we, we'll do what we do every week. We work together and then we are going to, whoops, that's my timer. My battery for my Kia needs to be replaced. Um, there it goes. And we, uh, we're going to work together for 20 minutes, and then I am going to take your questions about your work and your creative process. And if at the end of those 20 minutes, you would like to get in touch, Zoe's going to tell you first uh, how to do it. But first, I would like to remind us that while we have plenty of time to talk about process, we don't have the bandwidth of the time to actually have you read, uh, you know, or present your work, you know. So, okay, so Zoe, tell us how to get in touch. Yeah, hi everyone. Welcome to Watch Me Work. After the 20 minute work session, please go ahead and use the raise your hand function. Um, that way we can get a nice queue of questions going and then we will call on your name and ask you to please unmute to ask your question. Um, so yeah, that's how we're gonna Thank do you. it. Thank you. And Amritha, uh, who is the head of New Work Development, would you like to say anything? <laughs> Thank you, SLP. Yes, I just want to say welcome. Hello, everyone. Welcome to those who are joining for the first time. Hello to those who are returning. Um, we're really thrilled to have you and really thrilled to support Watch Me Work. And with me is um, Haley Lopes, who is our um, New Work Development Fellow. And I will just name, out of respect for my amazing colleague, Zoe. Zoe is sick, sick today, but loves Watch Me Work so much that she is here. So the three of us will likely be, you you know, supporting the kind of calling on folks and all of those logistics so that Zoe can take care of herself. Oh, how sweet. Oh my goodness. Oh gosh. Okay. We should, we're sending you healing vibes all the way. And here we go.
<laughs> Technology. Amazing. Amazing. Hi, it's, it's been 20 minutes. I'm so glad I wasn't like talking to myself because I, for, I forgot to mute it. <laughs> it's one of those days. Um, yeah, so it's, it's uh, here's now the time where we uh, talk with you about your work and your creative process. So if you have a question, do as Zoe uh, suggested and um, make yourself known. Yes. Um, yes, please raise your hand with the raise your hand function on Zoom and we'll start a queue and we'll ask you to unmute yourself with your question. Lynn, thank you. Please unmute yourself. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Suzanne. Um, I am not a writer by trade, but I do write and I enjoy writing. I find that the only way that I can kind of get a momentum going, because I don't do outlines or any of those things that I'm sure I should be doing. Um, <laughs> the only way that I find that I can get a momentum is if I start reading it again from the beginning. Okay. And that somehow, somehow gives me an engine to get to where I've left off and to, to kind of rewrite a bit along the way and then pr propel myself forward. Right. You know, obviously, once we start to get up high in the page numbers, that becomes more and more difficult to do. So what would your recommendation be for me moving forward? Ooh, read faster? No. Um, <laughs> I mean, what's great is um, the, the rereading your, your work is something that, what's a wonderful writer who writes a whole lot? Joyce Carol Oates, she's amazing. You know, she gets a lot done. And she, I've, I've, I've heard her, you know, talks where she says she rereads what she's written um, before diving in on that day. And uh, I think uh, Hemingway also did it. They reread what they've written before diving in that day. Um, he also, you know, went fishing on boats after he had a hard day's work and you know so we we don't have to you know take every, their example you know all the way especially with Hemingway but um Joyce Carol Oates does that I so you reread your work I would say read faster you know okay uh if you want to it, it, it this and we we come to oftentimes we come to a moment in our in our writing in our in our work whatever we do where you go I'm going to do it the way I've been doing it. And that's becoming slightly problematic. So what do I do? And I'm like, well, okay, you can try something new. You can try a little bit of an outline. Does that, so does that, would that totally cramp your style? What, what's, uh, do you, do you, are you, uh, do you hate outlines? What's the deal? I do not have a style. You do not. Well, you do have a style. You reread your work before you write. Then that, that's a style. Okay, fair. Um, yeah, I just, I find that, you know, when I'm writing, I'm kind of, it's very, or it's very organic and intuitive in that moment. I, I don't know where this story is going, for example. So I, how I can't, I have such admiration for people that, that can figure out their story before they write it. I, mine always happen in the moment. Oh, oh, um, yeah, <clears throat> I totally hear you. And I respect what you're saying. Um, outlining isn't figuring out what's going to happen before you do it. Outlining is just saying, I'm going to go over there. <laughs> That's all. Oh, I think, oh, and then this happens, you know, outlining is just, um, like, uh, pretending, pretending that, you know, so that you can, uh, not think about it too much when you're writing. It's not figuring it out. It's it's more like giving yourself some guideposts or guardrails, you know? Like if I said, so where do you live right now? Where do you right, where now, right now I live in Los Angeles. Fantastic. Okay. So say you were going to walk to New York City. Wow. That'd be a, quite a walk. Amazing. Okay. Well, say you're going to take a bike ride. Let's just take a bike ride. Okay. You're going to take a oh, bike ride. You, yeah. you have a route planned right you have a route but you don't like know what the journey's going to be do you you just kind of know some stops along the way uh -huh. you don't you meet like frida who makes the best fried donuts that you've ever tasted in montana right you just right. know that you're stopping in montana 
So just to make sure that I understand, I, I this is making sense to me, I think. It doesn't have, because I'm imagining these outlines that I would write for like college or for school that were like so detailed and fleshed out. What you're suggesting is it doesn't need to be that fleshed out. It can it can kind of just be like, because I know where I want to go in the end. Oh, great. Oh, well, that's kind of like an outline, right? Kind of. Kind of like, and in the end, <laughs> you know. Uh-huh. Okay. Outline. That sounds a little outline -y to me. Okay. I mean, yes. And I think I I I I would I would agree with you. That the outline, the outline's gotten a bad, you know, you know, some people like like the word friend, right? I mean, I'm sorry, Mark Zuckerberg, but ever since, you know, Facebook, the word friend just don't mean the same thing as it used to back in the day, right? Right, right. You understand, okay? Love, same thing. Love don't mean the same thing, okay? So neat outline. Outline is like crying tears on its pillow because everyone thinks it's like this weird ass thing that we all learned in like fifth grade or whatever. And we all we were like, Ugh. like diagramming sentences, probably the same thing. So outline is just like you know, you live in Los Angeles. Do you ever you, imagine, imagine someone knocked on your door and said, Lynn, you want to go for a hike with me in the mountains? And their name was whatever, Frida. And she looked like Frida Kahlo. And she said, do you want to go for a hike with me? She said, sure. And outline is like Frida Kahlo. You want to go on a walk with her, right? It's okay. If she's going to help you. If you have you you're you're working a certain way, you're finding it difficult to continue to work that way. Just sketch a little bit. Van Gogh sketched, right? Van Gogh, the great painter, sketched before he painted. That's all it is. Just a little sketch. Love that. Thank you so much. And have fun and pretend pretend it's Frida Kahlo. <laughs> Love it. I mean, if you like Frida Kahlo, I mean, I love Frida Kahlo. She's cool, right? Right? Okay, there you go. Thank you, Lynn. We have a great queue going. So we're going to start with Nicole. Please unmute yourself. Good afternoon, everyone. So happy to be here. Um, my question is, how do you keep from losing your nerve? Oh. I am someone who tends to write, quote unquote, political plays. Mm. So. I wrote a play about gun violence in 2008 before writing about gun violence was even a thing. And then I wrote a play about called Campus Jihad. And and most recently I wrote a play about called Homegrown about the January 6th insurrection. And so my path has been that I write plays about things that are incendiary, kind of, sort of. Not to me, but, but they have... But nobody, like I can get maybe one or two productions, but they don't, they don't continue. So I have this idea, I have an idea that's kind of working on me about this current um, conflict. I mean, I know you're, you're, which conflict, right? We're in so many, but I have a, I have a kind of a kernel of an idea about this war that we're, well, the war that is happening in Gaza, but well, I'm in a place where I feel like, I'm not even going to touch it because nobody's going to produce it. Oh, so I'm in a place where I I don't have the nerve I once did. Mm. So I'm I have a question about how one finds one nerve, one's nerve, keeps one's nerve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm in central Illinois, by the way, so I'm not, you know, I'm not on a coast. I'm not in a place where, you know, that's brimming with receptivity at all points right 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 and right wow that's that's a really that's a really great question because and you're right nicole for us uh let us acknowledge those of us who are on you know who are in say you know a, on a coast or in a big city you know that sometimes it's often easier for us to find uh people who are more receptive to our our our, our wild nervy outspoken mm -hmm you know, works, you know, so, so I hear you on that one. How do you, well, well, I don't have to tell you how to find your nerve because my sister, you found it. You got it. 
You wrestling with it every day. The thing is how to keep, yeah, how to keep it going and how not to suddenly go, you know, I'm going to write some lovely Hallmark movie because that's what's going to get, you know, some some play. Um because that's where I've been the last year. I decided I was gonna write a Christmas movie because <laughs> that's the better use of my time. And Maybe. how to go? Huh? How to go? Oh, uh, it's still in the hopper. Still. Because my even my Christmas movie was too edgy for the producer. So that's <laughs> all I'm gonna say about it. Because <laughs> what's in you comes out, right? So there we, you know, what can I do? Well, I I you know, I, I would say surround yourself as much as I am buoyed by by associations with good friends and colleagues and like like watch me work I get on watch me work I'm like look at all these people we're out here doing our thing you know I teach at NYU I love my students and they cheer me up I invite friends over to my apartment to sit around and you know sip tea or drink whatever um and talk about what's going on with us um I would say as much as you can, Nicole, surround yourself with people who will lift your spirits, not just, you know, blow smoke up your behind, but really challenge you and lift your spirits as much as you possibly can. And what's great about online these days is because we can find communities that will engage us and allow us to engage with them. And they're authentic and they're, they want to hear what you have to say and they'd love to have conversations with you. You can have readings of your work online. You can have productions of your work online. That's what's great about technology. We love technology. You can do. You can make short films about your play. You can say, oh, we couldn't find a theater to do my work. I'm going to make some YouTube videos, some movies, and post them online. I'm going to write a great script and, and make a movie out of it. You mm -hmm. can do that with your, I don't know what kind of technology you got, but if you have one of these phones, you know, they make movies now. You can make a little movie. You can edit it on your computer. You can get your work out there. Uh, and again, the community though, you know, build your community, continue to build your community. So Thank there's, you a, so much. there's a way, you're welcome. Appreciate what a great it. question. What a great question. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. All right, next up is Lori. You could unmute yourself. Hey, Lori. Hey, SLP. Uh, first, I just wanted to thank you because uh, you got me unstuck with the play I was doing on serial killers and the and and all of the sex workers uh, wow. that were coming wow. in. Remember that they were all you're like, just get them talking, get them talking. Yeah. So I finished my first act this week, and we're going to do a stage reading next week. So Fantastic. thank you. Congratulations. You got me unstuck. Uh, I was in a I was in a tough place there with it, and it's flowing. So thank you, and thanks to everybody on here because it it just means so much. Um, my question is now I'm like full throttle on this one, but I've got two other full lengths that are really speaking to me and, you know, are moving me. And I'm kind of afraid that if I don't stick with this one, um, you know, that I'll lose some momentum here, but I'm afraid I'm going to lose something with what's driving me on the other two full lengths. So my question is like, do you, do you recommend working on two or three at once? Or should I kind of focus where I've got this energy because I'm also you know trying to do I set aside so much time to do the business of playwriting too right um, but I just feel these moving in me and I just kind of wanted to get your opinion on working on two or three big pieces at once versus stay steady on one well I mean you you can work a little bit on two or three at once if you want you know um you're just going to have to be more focused, you know, I mean, have you gotten to the end of, you've gotten to the end of that, of the, the other play or not yet. Uh, it's, which it's flowing. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. The, so the, the one about the serial killer, I'm, I'm just starting act two with that. Um, the, the second one that I've been working on, I have a, um, a full draft. It's my second draft, but it needs, I know where it needs a lot of work. And the third one, I just got the first act. Right. You can work on three things at once. I would suggest that you finish that, the this one about the serial, you're getting to the second act. You're about to start. How long do you think it's going to take you to finish it? I got light in my face. Um, I'm kind of hoping after the staged reading that I'll have a, a really good idea that's happening the week after next. And then I think I'll be able to probably 
within three or four weeks, based on the feedback, we're going to do a talk back, probably have something I feel okay about to say, hey, I think this is finished in a good solid uh, piece. Do you think you can, do you think that working on several pieces at once is going to kind of make it hard for you to work because you also have the business side of everything? We don't want you to get scattered if you don't have to be. That's what I'm afraid of. And, and the, the other thing that's messing me up is that one is about a serial killer and the other is a farce. <laughs> so that's messing with my head a little. Uh, you know that song, uh, and I love dating myself because it's so interesting. There's a song that Johnny Cash, you know Johnny Cash. The oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus. Right. So you know that song, he sang one piece at a time. Yes. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so just do one play at a time. Okay. That's what I buy that then you'll do that you'll do your play okay and you know then you'll be you will reach an end point you're gonna if you run a marathon you're gonna run one at a time you know you can you can finish you know one one day and then start another one the next day but run run at a time for, for right now just do one at a time it's because you're going to be doing other things at the same time you've got the business side of things you've got family obligations and all other kinds of things to do so you'll have you'll be plenty busy but uh, okay. I'll try writing one thing at a time. Okay, thank you. And I'm going to go find that Johnny Cash song and play it later. <laughs> thank uh, you. It's a good one. It's about how he stole a Cadillac. But anyway. Thank you, Lori. Um, Alani, please unmute yourself. Uh, thanks. Uh, hi, I just had a... Um, I, I was curious about how you settle on discovering like what your dramatic premise for a project might be oh my. um yeah whether or not that's something you discover early on or it comes out you know a little later but yeah oh my goodness okay bro you're gonna have to help me so so for those of us <laughs> dramatic premise what do you mean oh i mean like um like your central argument of like you know if someone was to come to you and be like but what's the show about you know, and I'm I'm kind of like in this sphere where I have um, these individuals who want to understand, right, like what the piece is about. And they're like trying to get me to settle on like some, some ironic like sentence, <laughs> you know what I mean? That can, yeah, that like somehow sums up what, you know, every character is, um, Mm -hmm. uh some question that every character is wrestling with uh -huh. and i was just like uh -huh. it's like i know but like for this piece i'm like i don't know um so yeah you written the play already uh yes oh well that's good yeah well, a that's my, yeah huh? what tell me um, oh a musical a musical oh, yeah. you've written the show already okay okay well so i would say alani that's a that's a fine time to think about what you call your dramatic premise. Okay. What's the, uh, the, the tricky, uh, oftentimes we are asked to, to uh, discuss our work. What's, what's it about, you know, what's the log line? And a lot of times um, we're asked to develop those kinds of things before we've written it. And it, 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 it can be helpful and it can be not so helpful. Mm. So this is a fine time. You've written it. And now you just got to say, what's it about? And you can, if you, you know, it's the elevator pitch question, right? Is that, is that kind of what, what the, is that? yeah, like we have, like, I have the log line of it, but I think that, I think they're like, I think they're pushing more for like, you know, like, how do I put it into words? It's like, they're trying to understand, you know, like, like beyond the log line of the elevator pitch, right? Just like what is, it's like what's the like the 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 kernel of the central thing that everyone is wrestling with, right? Within this, you know, historic piece, right? It's based off historic events, but they're just like trying to understand. They're like, yes, I know the log line, but like, what is it about? It's the what is it about that the question that keeps being right. asked. Um, so, so where do you live, Alani? I'm in LA as well. So do you have like a house or a building where you live? A yeah. house, house. Okay, okay, so so do you have like a street with a sidewalk? 
we do not we're in the mountains so we don't have any sidewalks so you yeah. can, oh yeah so yeah. i understand so you can you can like but you can walk outside we can walk outside yeah no i'm just saying so like go outside you know when you go outside you know at, a, at an appropriate time like a safe time to go outside and walk where you would walk you can walk right outside yeah. and like okay um you know pretend like pretend you're you're taking a walk with I don't know. Let's just say, I mean, regardless of what you think of their work, Steven Spielberg, just say you're outside, you're walking with Steven Spielberg and you're like, you got like, you're going to tell him what your movie's about. Just pretend you just got to get in your body, walk outside nature. It's beautiful. Right. And tell him about your movie. I mean, your movie, your musical. You see what I mean? Yeah. 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 Because, because you're sitting trying to answer their question. Right. You need to just get in your, you've already done the writing. You've done the hard work, right? right? Now you got to have a little fun. Steven Spielberg wants to make your musical or whatever, who, or David Stone, who, who, who produced Wicked, whatever. That, you know, someone fabulous wants to produce your work. And they just got to, you know, they got to, you know, you got to talk about it a little bit for them to be able to, to communicate that to the uh, the marketing team. That's right, all. Right, right. Love right, you. Right. You just got to get outside and, and it's beautiful day. I'm assuming you're in Los Angeles, you know, and you're walking. You got to get some air around it. You know, you got to make it, you got to make it enjoy. This is the fun part. This is the gravy on the cake. Right, right, right. Okay. It's, it's going to be fun. It's fun. Yeah. This is the fun part. This is the, you finished, you're, you're on the podium at the Olympics. You're getting a medal. Yeah, they just want to know what what do we say about it, you know? Right, 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 right. It's a joyous, it's a joyous opportunity. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alani. Timothy, feel free to unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, hey, everybody. Hey, SLP. How you doing? Hey. Um. Uh. Kind of a technical question. Um, you know, when you when you're like, I'm working on a screenplay and I'm and I'm gaming it out, and you know, you look at your characters and it's like you got a you got a want and a realization and obstacles, and then they arrive at a new place. And so, in the process of doing this, I realized that like all of that happens, not all of it, but enough of it happens, like in the first three pages. So question right did i go back and did i go back and backfill can these things go in a different order um kind of want to get your thoughts on that so it, you so you're writing a screenplay and they're mm -hmm. a screenplay the, the classic string screenplay structure asks you to do certain things at certain times mm -hmm. right. which, and it's very effective if you do it if, if you have some fun with it it's not like painting by numbers it's actually kind of enjoyable to my yep. experience. Um, so you start with your, I mean, I'm just saying, is it like the, the screenplay where you start with your opening image? Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, there, there's that. There's like, you know, it's it's a kind of a journey play. And I'm like, so, so what does the character want? They want to complete the journey. They realize they're not going to be able to, but they plow forward anyway. Um, and I realized that the character figures out that they're not going to be able to complete the journey way too early. So, that's you funny. know, and also, Timothy, yeah, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. and it, and, you know, if it were a play, we'd say to an actor or to a writer, you can't play the end. Right. You can't play the end. You, you, King Lear can't. Play the oh gee, I'm never gonna be happy again. You know, you know, you know what I mean? he's like, it's gonna work out. Hamlet gonna be like, I'm gonna figure this shit out, right? He can't. You so you can't play the end. So your character who's on a journey, right? Mm -hmm. They set out on a journey, and they fully believe they're gonna make it. Mm -hmm. They have a plan. Right. They, they have a plan. They might even have a guide named Frida Kahlo. But no, they have a plan. And they meet people along the way, right? I'm mm -hmm. guessing. Mm -hmm. Who 
teach them things about things. Yeah, to a degree, yeah. I'm just guessing. But 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 they don't decide that they're not going to make it. I Something mean, happens to her very early on um, where it dawns on her that she's either not going to make it or it's not going to go the way she wants. Okay. But I don't understand your problem then. Oh. Well, well that could be an answer of, unto itself. Um, but um, I, I guess what I'm saying is in order for it to work, it's like, oh gosh, I'm messing this up. Um, she, sees, she sees that the journey won't work. Um, she, she goes after it anyway. Um, and I'm just worried that like, it's kind of given the game away, you know, very, very early on. So um, that's kind of, and I'm like, you know, okay, well, should I start it earlier? Should I, should we use flashbacks? Should, you know. You could start um, it earlier. You could have that thing that happens to her where she feels like it's not going to work out like she wanted it to be. Encourage her to change her game plan. I mean, how many people okay. wanting to be like a ballerina and like ended up, you know, being mayor or something? I, I don't, you know, you see what I'm saying? Um, she has to stay active. She has to keep moving right. forward. Um, and if you need the events to happen where they do, then she's got to react differently to them. Um, or, or you okay. could start it early. You could start it when she's born. And you know, I mean, sure, right. you could do. It, but I mean, that's that's your choice. That's your that's your choice. Um, it's tricky not knowing the specifics of 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 your story. But yeah, 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 I get it. Move the the the. What happens when you can move that around? That's your choice as a writer. Um, right. And you can move, either move so, them around or move around how she responds to them. So in other words, if you have a, like a one, two, three, four, five plot points, you know, want, action, realization, obstacles, ending, you can mess up those numbers. Like in the, in the, in the, in the story, you can start with like three and go back to one and then go, you know, you can you can try that if you if you if you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you can, no, I mean, want. What does she want? Action. What right. action? And then something happens yeah. to her. Right. Then what does she do. Yeah, something happens. Like she's going. She's driving from California. Her car breaks down, or her car is stolen. She still wants to mm -hmm. get to New York. Does she decide I'm never going to get to New York and the end of the movie, or does she say, I think I'll take a bike. Look, there's Rita Callow on a bicycle. There's another way to get there. I still want to go to New York. Right. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Like, uh, have you ever seen the film? I mean, you can also watch journey films, you know, films where characters go on big trips, wanting big things, you know? Right. Um, there are lots of them. There's a, there's a lot of these films, but character, and it can sort of help you. Sure. I mean, your, your story. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, Sarah, please unmute yourself. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's my first time joining one of these, so I'm very excited to be here. Um, yeah, so I'm a student working on my first full-length play, um, and I just want to say really quickly that I'm very excited because um, it is about young women based on observations I had on Sarge Bartman's life. And my first play that I read in my African American performing arts class was your play Venus on Sarge's life. So this is just a really special moment for me. Um, but my question is that I found in writing this piece that like the opposing force or like antagonist or whatever you would call it gets very like amorphous into things like, well, society, the patriarchy, white supremacy, which like kind of lacks conflict because then I feel like it's just like a bunch of people in the room sitting. Um, but when I think of ways to give it a little bit more drive, I feel like it leans into, oh, well, I, I don't want to pit the women against each other or I don't want to like bring in a male presence or a presence of like their partners into the piece um, where it's undue. So I was just wondering if you had like any advice or words of wisdom on like mm -hmm. how to bring in drive when the 
opposing force is something that's not really tangible, if that makes sense. Right, right, right. So that's a great question. Wow. Um, so the opposing force is not really tangible. You seem to be locating it in characters that you'd rather not bring in, you know, so, so, which is, which is okay. Although that might be a problem, you know, this is the thing, things like, mm, you know, the patriarchy, right? Blah, blah. So mm -hmm. the patriarchy is expressed in very specific ways. Right. By a whole wealth, a whole bunch of different kinds of people, not just men folk, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times the patriarchy is expressed in the actions of men folk, but a lot of times, to your point, the patriarchy is expressed in actions of women folk. Mm -hmm. We internalize that stuff. That to me is interesting. Um, but you say you don't want to pit the women against each other. Um, yeah, I think I don't mind them like, you know, they can be, be antagonistic in each other's lives without like being the antagonist of the story, mm -hmm. I suppose. Yeah, I guess just being aware that I want to not make it like, oh, well, she's the bad one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could she, could she, could she have a, re I mean, the bad one, could she, you know, have like a, is there a reason that she's the, she could be the bad one? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, people could say Medea, you know, Medea, you know, not Tyler Perry's Medea. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay. Medea, Euripides, Medea, you know, she's the bad one, you know what I mean? But she had a reason for, for doing what she did. I mean, it was rough, you know what I mean? I mean, she killed her children, ah, but she had a reason for doing it. Is it worth right. getting to know why someone might behave in ways that, we don't like mm -hmm. yeah no i think that's a very helpful thought path because i've already like i have some things percolating there and i think that that yeah, yeah. i mean just you know i mean because otherwise we create drama with no drama everybody's likable and and righteous and they always do the right thing and they're always saying the right thing or trying and you know this amorphous like you said mm -hmm outside so force makes their life unbearable, but it's no one you'd ever see or meet, you know, and that's a little trick. We can come, we can look and examine some people who are, you know, difficult types. Mm -hmm. It's worth a try anyway, to see if that, if that kind of grounds your story a little bit. Right. Thank you. Oh, sure. And best of, Luck with your play and come back and visit us. Thank you, I will. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you so much, Shira. Can you, Crystal, can you please unmute yourself? Please. Hi. Hey, Crystal, how you doing? Good, good. I, I know there's not much time. I'm gonna try to be as quick as possible. Um, um, so it's not my question, Is I have a question, but the update is that the year has been still an issue. Um, only, and I realize why some of why it's been an issue has been because, like, when I do the research of some of the events that I wanted to put in, it's too, it's it's too accurate, and and I don't want it in that time period. So that's why I didn't want a year. So I'm still working it out. I'm still trying oh. to that year, and I didn't. I yeah. My question has become as I've been writing and incorporating the character who does the violence, um, how do I not make this person uh, like a f foreshadowing of, of, I guess, not evil, but like, yeah, I mean, of being a, a bad person or a past person who does an absolute wrong thing like I feel like I'm falling into him becoming when we first meet him and when we first um you know experience him he's a little gruff and um and I I'm just having trouble trying to find a, a more uh layered and multi-dimensional um character for for him so because i remember what you were saying last week about finding their humanity either everyone 
And and so I'm just, am I misquoting? No, I'm, I'm just raising my, it's it's a tricky thing to hear in a general sense like that. Um, but but yeah, keep going, keep going. Um, You're talking about like the, I haven't written the violent scene that I was telling you about and I'm like still avoiding it. I'm still trying to write around it. I know I have to get to it. Um, and and I remember when we were speaking, um, you said that if you know uh, for this for writing not writing like violence for the sake of violence or gratuitous, you know, to make sure you take care of your characters and make sure everyone, um, uh, you know, their humanity is 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 shown. And so the people who are suffering the violence, yes. Right. Do you have to do you have to show the perpetrator at all? You mean in that scene or just in general? In the play at all. Uh yeah, because he drives the action that drives what could shift the relationship between the two women. Can he be really nice? Can he be? I I started him off being really nice, but I uh, I I did start start it off that way, and then he kind of flips. But can I say a little more? Um, it's yeah. I don't know. What we're gonna get cut off. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. The time is is an issue, so um, I think we should we should find a way to to wrap it up because okay. it's so too. Um, but I, I would I would say, you know, write it. Don't worry about it for now. You there's a lot of tentacle questions stemming out, and it's tricky for me to like, you know, make a give suggestions, not knowing the specifics of the work when it is when it involves things like violence, trauma, those kinds of things. And I would would hope that we don't get the wrong understanding of what I'm talking about when I say think about the humanity and all that. Uh, so I just want to be very mindful that what you're talking about is very specific and a big question. And me not knowing the specifics of your work, I just want to be mindful that I'm not saying, no, don't worry about it, right? Whatever. I'm not saying that at all. And we just need to unpack this maybe next time. You've been in the class, the Watch Me Work for a long time, Crystal, and I always appreciate your your questions and stuff. And uh, we we should table it and talk about it um, next next week. I just want to say a couple of things before we wrap up. Two people that I, I saw. I know there's lots of wonderful people on here. Thanks, New Work Development, for getting us such a robust attendance today. And thank you all for attending. Uh, I saw Ryan here, who I haven't seen in years. And my friend Sten from Sweden is in the house. I cannot believe it. Me and Sting go back, way back to when we would hang out in London. So I want to give you a shout out, brother. I see you. And it's so great. So great to see you all. Um, old friends, new friends. I'm just giving love to you, everybody. Please come back. These are great questions. And we had so many questions uh, this week. Sometimes we hardly have any, but we had so many questions this week. I'd love to, to talk with you all. I put a link in the chat to Sula and the Joyful Noise, which is my test kitchen slash band. If any of you are in New York, Come on down and hang out. I'm forming a band to work on some new songs as I work on a new theater show. The link is in the chat, Sula and the joyful noise.com. Um, anything new work development, any any words of wisdom as we as we wrap up today? Just want to say thank you, SLP. Thank you, everyone. And MD and Sten, if you come back next week, so our next Watch Me Work is next week, um, February 12th at 5, and you get on the queue, I promise that we will make sure that we get your questions in. So okay. please come back and join us. Okay, sending love. Thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye.